Hi, my name is Eric and I'm the inventor of the Massage Track. I'm here to show you some very effective self-massage techniques you can use on your forearms, wrists, and hands to heal tendonitis or perform at a higher level athletically. I've been treating my own tendonitis for 12 years and these are some of the most important tools in my bag of tricks. First, you'll need a hand towel to cushion your arm and some massage oil. There's nothing better than coconut oil and it's cheapest if you buy whatever's on sale at the grocery store. Spread a little oil on your forearm from one end to the other, but not too much because you don't want your skin to be slippery. Now use your free elbow to spread the oil evenly. Then place your free elbow in the crook of the arm you're massaging. Apply a little pressure and then move your elbow down slightly in the direction of your hand just until you start to feel that you are not on top of the joint, but rather pressing on some muscle. Now you can apply more pressure. My personal experience with massage and body work is that the more pressure and pain, the better I feel the next day. And I've come to believe that with massage, pain is just tightness leaving the body. That's why you see me getting up out of my seat and leaning into my elbow to apply as much pressure as I can on the medius part of my forearm. If you use a computer for hours every day or use your hands for any repetitive task, it's your forearms that are working overtime and they will get very tight and hold a lot of tension as a result. So that's where I spend the largest proportion of massage time. You'll notice that I'm moving my wrist slowly up and down through its range of motion. That causes the tendons to slide back and forth underneath my elbow, adding an extra dimension of micro-movements to the massage, which you can't really accomplish any other way. So go through the full range of motion of your wrist three or four times in each position. I'm moving through this massage faster than I would normally for the purposes of demonstration. When you do it, you should hold each position for 15 to 60 seconds, depending on what you feel. When you apply pressure with your elbow, if there's no pain, lean into it. If you still feel no discomfort, you're done with that spot, so move a half inch farther down your forearm. You're looking for the spots where you feel discomfort because that's where you're tight and where you need to spend the most time. You should notice the discomfort fades substantially after somewhere between 15 and 30 seconds. If it's not fading in that time period, you're applying too much pressure, so ease up. After it fades, apply more pressure and start counting again. This is called the stretch point, and you can learn more about it at massagetrack.com. When you've been in the same spot for 60 seconds, it's time to move another half inch. Close to the wrist, you'll come to a spot where your extensor muscles become tendons, and it may feel like there's a rope underneath your skin. Your elbow will tend to slide off, but do the best you can to apply pressure on top of this thick rope. Try rotating your elbow in a circular motion to apply pressure from different angles, too. You can also use that rotation in the gap between your wrist and hand to get better access to the tendons. Now that we've reached the hand, a quick warning for anyone with a severe repetitive strain injury. Twelve years ago, when my injury was acute, I went to a clinic for a hand massage and the results were traumatic. My hand swelled up painfully for a whole week. If I could go back in time, here's what I'd do differently. First, I'd do my own massage so I could control everything about it. I'd work on my forearms and wrists only, every day for a week. Then I would start working my hands in, slowly and gently, using the techniques you're going to see now. When you get to the back of the hand, you may find it strange to be applying pressure where there's no muscle. You're applying pressure on tendon and bone here, and it's uncomfortable. You should go slow and try this out gently at first, and develop your own sense of how helpful this is for you. My experience is that fairly strong pressure here heals my hands when they're overworked. You'll see that I apply strong pressure all the way down to the tips of the fingers. It's difficult to apply pressure to the fingers evenly, so I'll often do fingers individually, as you can see. You can't really see this in the video, but I apply more pressure in the meaty parts of the fingers and less on the joints. The large muscles of the thumb get the heaviest pressure of all. 
I want to mention that massage therapists will always massage in the opposite direction that you see me working in. They'll start at the fingertips and move up in the direction of your heart and say that this is done to avoid damaging your veins. I'd like to do my massages like that, but find it too difficult. The bottom line for me is that I need this self-massage to keep my hands functioning and can't afford to pay somebody to do it with technical perfection. Next, I'm going to use the edge of the table to massage the forearm extensors, and I want to show you what the edge of my table looks like so you can see it's round. I would not do this on a sharp edge. If you don't have a table with a soft edge, you can use a staircase railing or countertop wherever you find a good rounded edge. Note that whenever you work on tendons that have never been massaged before, you're likely to find tight, unhealthy tissue that is painful to touch. If you massage it every day using these techniques, you'll find that in time, that pain will go away entirely, and these tendons will feel like any others. Everybody's body is different, but in my experience, that takes me three to five weeks. Notice that as I work my forearm on the edge of the table, I'm occasionally twisting my hand and also going through the same range of motion of the wrist as I did previously on the top of the table. You'll see also that I use my other forearm to get better leverage and apply more pressure against the table. Note that when I get near the wrist, I rock from side to side a little bit to rotate the wrist to work the side angles as best I can. Now I'm working the belly of the forearm, and I'll use the same techniques that I used on the top. Working the hand is more productive here because you're applying pressure on the meat of the palm and fingers. The thumb muscles particularly can use a lot more attention here. And there you go. These have been life-saving techniques for me, and now they're yours too.